Does Pathfinder lose that loving feeling in the shift to a new rule set? Is Pathfinder for Savage Worlds our savior from the OGL? Let's take a look at the book. Hello, and welcome to Saving Throw Show, the show designed to get you up and running in RPGs quickly. My name is Dom Zook. This episode is brought to you by Hero Forge. More on them later. Here at the Exploration Society Workshop, we see a lot of new and old tabletop role-playing games. And sometimes these are amalgamations of areas we've explored before. Such is the case with today's find. Pathfinder for Savage Worlds, or more commonly known as Savage Pathfinder, is a little nugget of joy that blends the fast, furious, and fun game system of Savage Worlds with the venerable Pathfinder setting by Paizo. Now, folks new to the Exploration Society may not realize that we got our start teaching Pathfinder 1st Edition way back in 2014, in a series of wonderfully goofy and, at times, if the comments are to be believed, cringe-inducing but nonetheless informative tutorials. And we've covered a variety of Savage World settings extensively since then as well. So this mix hits our nostalgic sweet spot quite nicely. But is it right for you? Well, hang tight, I'm kidding there. So how can Pinnacle Entertainment, the folks behind Savage Worlds, get away with producing Pathfinder material in their game system? Well, it should be noted that Savage Pathfinder is based off of first edition Pathfinder. Yep, the same one we did those tutorials on all those years ago, and not the second edition Paizo is currently producing. And so some of the advances made in the Pathfinder system from first to second edition just don't make their way here. Pathfinder 1e uses the open gaming license because it itself was a byproduct of D&D's 3.5, and through a unique partnership between Paizo and Pinnacle, they were able to bring the Pathfinder setting and concepts over to Savage Worlds. How is this affected by the OGL from Wizards of the Coast? Well, not at all. Paizo is essentially licensing the lore, setting, and name. Otherwise, everything is converted over to Savage Worlds, and the Wizards OGL has no jurisdiction. If you're looking for the latest and greatest Pathfinder, however, you'll want to check out Pathfinder's second edition books, which we hope to cover in the future. But back to Savage Pathfinder. With Watsi's recent adoption of the OGL, many folks are likely looking at D&D alternatives, especially since Pathfinder 1e was based on the previous OGL and may suffer should drastic changes take place. Pathfinder for Savage Worlds skirts around the issue as the driving mechanics are no longer based in D&D, but instead are rooted in the Savage Worlds system. In a bit of a departure from their other settings books, you don't need the Savage Worlds Adventure Core rulebook, commonly referred to as the Suede Book, to run Pathfinder. Everything you need to get up and running is completely within the Pathfinder for Savage Worlds Core rulebook. That's nice if you're looking to quickly and efficiently get started. Thankfully, you also do not need any of the Paizo books unless you want to do some of your own conversions down the road, but they aren't needed for standard play. And Pinnacle has stated that they intend on creating conversions with most of the major adventure paths and supplements in the future, including the Advanced Player Guide. Let's take a closer look at the mechanics and just how much Savage Worlds feeds back into the setting. If you've watched any of our Savage Worlds content, then this character creation is familiar territory for you. All of the basics are here from choosing hindrances to assigning points for traits and skills. Where we get a little departure is in the Ancestries portion, which, to be fair, Savage Worlds easily accommodates. Playing as different species is a linchpin in many modern RPGs, so there's not a huge shift here. It's interesting, however, seeing how they adapted the races of Pathfinder into Savage Worlds mechanics. It's all pretty self-explanatory with not much gained in the system shift. The introduction of hindrances and edges really helps separate the two systems though, and provides a great avenue for roleplay alternatives rather than the min-max style Pathfinder often leans into. So now the biggie, how does Savage Worlds handle classes? Savage Worlds notoriously has a class-less mechanical system. Anybody has the propensity to do nearly anything. That's part of what makes Savage Worlds, well, Savage Worlds. But there is a mechanic for giving your character a class in the form of an edge which can be taken at creation. To note, you don't have to take class edge and can in fact substitute it for a background or professional edge instead. But in this little ingenious move, they've provided an avenue to still follow the class systems that many are familiar with without giving up character freedom. Multiclassing is also still possible, but only once per rank, rather than per level as in Pathfinder. This means you can't jump from Paladin to Bard every other advance, but that might actually be a good thing. 
This could, however, lead to a bout of analysis paralysis as you gauge which edges and skills you need for an advancement goal down the line, but I think it overall balances quite well. I also want to mention, where does the fantasy companion, Savage World's book for adapting any fantasy setting, come in? Well, there are some stark differences, especially where it comes to ancestries. The core Pathfinder book only has the core ancestries, and it also includes the original Pathfinder abilities with each ancestry. Whereas the Fantasy Companion has a lot more options for ancestries, but the core Pathfinder races are represented more as a base guide without their Pathfinder abilities. So you can still mix and match if you like, but I reckon there will be more ancestry choices coming down the pipeline in Pathfinder in the future. As I said earlier, the Pathfinder for Savage Worlds book contains everything you need to get rolling, no need to refer to other Savage Worlds books for core mechanics, and we'll cover most of the Savage Worlds basics in later videos. The layout by one of my favorite designers, Carl Kiesler, and Thomas Shook is divine. Everything is easy to find in both the PDF and print copy. The PDF is accessible as well, meaning you can select text for text-to-speech applications or translation services as needed. It's a nice touch. Let's look at the Pathfinder specific tweaks. They use Conviction here, which is also present in other Savage Worlds titles, but is usually an optional setting rule rather than an overall edict. Players can spend this Conviction to add a d6 to any trade and damage rolls until their next turn, and they can be maintained from turn to turn by spending bennies. It's a nice way of acknowledging when a player makes a tough call, ultimately rewarding roleplay beyond just telling a great joke at the table. This can help players to potentially tell deeper and more impactful stories. With the move to Savage Worlds, this Pathfinder has a much faster combat system than its progenitor. But before we get to that, a word from our sponsor, HeroForge. HeroForge is the internet's home for customizing and 3D printing tabletop miniatures and statuettes. Design your character from the ground up and see it in full 3D, and finally have a miniature that captures your vision. With color printing available and an easy, intuitive system of creation, HeroForge is the gold standard for custom miniatures. Go to HeroForge.com today and start building. And now, back to Savage Pathfinder. One thing that's made a helpful appearance is the wound cap. Like Conviction, this is usually an alternate setting rule in Savage Worlds products, but in Savage Pathfinder, it's hard and fast. And that makes things a bit more exciting and may hopefully help folks coming from other D20 systems worried about the lack of a pool of hit points. This version of the game also incorporates the optional setting rule of combat tests to make a combat a little more interesting for characters to have more options in a fight. If you've ever been in a pitched battle in D&D or Pathfinder where it comes down to just who has the most hit points and your short sword can only do so much, the move to Savage Worlds is going to open up a whole new combat world for you. So just how does this edition stack up and who exactly is it for? Well, let's answer the second part of that question now. If your experience with RPGs is D&D or OG Pathfinder, it's going to take some getting used to with the Savage Worlds system. But thankfully, Savage Worlds is a relatively easy system to learn with just enough crunch to keep the game mechanics flowing without players getting mired in the minutia. This is translated well in the book, and I feel really carries the Pathfinder setting a bit further. Cinematic play, a core concept of Savage Worlds, is on full display here, and in my experience it really helps get new players more comfortable with roleplay aspects just as much as they get used to lore. If you're coming to this from either a Pathfinder or Savage Worlds background already, I don't think you'll be disappointed either way. The core elements of each system are well represented here. If you've been looking for a more cinematic approach to your Pathfinder games, this may be the avenue to go. If you're looking for a more nuanced and rich fantasy setting for your Savage Worlds, you could do worse than Pathfinder, but this is not a substitute for Pathfinder 2.0. If you've lived and breathed Pathfinder, you might want to stick with that ecosystem. If you're looking to jump into a fantasy setting, but wondering whether you should get Pathfinder for Savage Worlds or the Fantasy Companion, my recommendation would be to go with Pathfinder if you're new, since the core book includes all the core suede rules as well as just a far more complete system. But if you're looking to zhuzh up your established fantasy world and you already have suede, then the Fantasy Companion will give you a lot of options without relegating you to the lore and setting of Pathfinder. 
It may be no surprise that I freaking love the savification of Pathfinder, all the lore and concepts behind Pathfinder, with all the mechanical grace and role-playing chutzpah of Savage Worlds. It's great that designers love Pathfinder as much as they love Savage Worlds, and it shows in how they bring all the details lovingly into the fold. But let me know what you think. Have you played Savage Pathfinder? What do you think of the shift? Let me know in the comments below, and leave a rating on our RPG review site. Link is in the description. And if this is your first time here and you enjoy the channel, please like and subscribe and, you know, do the thing. Thanks, and until next time, I'm Dom Zook, and let's dungeon!